Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I am filming a book review and I am going to review Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. I ended up with an arc of this only thanks to my good friend Justine, so thank you so much to her. If anyone had told baby Sandra or whatever age I was at the time when I started to read these that I would someday have an arc of a Cassandra Clare work, I would not believe you. This is a dream come true and also I kind of feel like it, it's not real. I binge read this in two days and Chain of Gold is being released on the 3rd of March 2020. It is the first installment in a new trilogy in the Shadowhunter Chronicles and that trilogy is called The Last Hours. The Last Hours is also the sequel series to The Infernal Devices, also by Cassandra Clare, obviously. The Infernal Devices is, if you don't know, the prequel series to The Mortal Instruments, which is like the first installment in the whole Shadowhunter Chronicles. So in Chain of Gold, we do follow the kids of the characters in The Infernal Devices. This is set in the Victorian era and this is set in Edwardian era in London. We follow the different characters, mainly James Herondale and Lucy Herondale, who are the kids from Tessa and Will from The Infernal Devices. And we also follow Cordelia Castells, who comes to London. She has been childhood friends with James and Lucy and is returning now to London, trying to fix their family's reputation after her father got arrested. James also have this group of friends and they are called the Merry Thieves after Robin Hood. In that friend group we have his power type Matthew and his two other good friends Christopher and Thomas. These six characters are like the main main characters but we do see other recurring characters from the last series and also some new ones because all the people from the last series got kids so there's a lot of them. Of course Cassandra Clare delivers with forbidden love and demon attacks because Shadowhunters, if you did not know, hunt demons and protect the our planets, the earth, the humans. Cassandra Clare did say that she does write her book so that you can start in a new series so you can start on the first book in that series. So technically you can start on this if you don't want to go through the other billion Shadowhunter Chronicle books. Which is understandable because usually we want to start on new things and not like read through a billion other ones that are considered older. And the quality here, the characters, the diversity here is so much better and like top notch compared to her first works. However, I would say that reading this first would be very difficult. Not because of the world necessarily, she does explain things, but very quickly, like maybe in one paragraph or one sentence, while in the other series, The Infernal Devices and The Mortal Instruments, not The Dark Artifices, which is the sequel series to The Mortal Instruments. Oh my god, this got complicated. As in The Dark Artifices, which start with Lady Midnight and Chain of Gold, we have that the characters are already shadow hunters. They already know each other, they're already in established relationship when we go into the book. While in Infernal Devices and the Mortal Instruments, which is the two series I would recommend starting with, the main character is introduced to the world and don't know about it beforehand. So they get totally different and deeper de explanations about the world than you would get here. And I think like the world building here was very surface level and I guess I felt the same in Lady Midnight. But that was released I think in like 2016 or something, so it's years ago since I read it for the first time, so I don't remember exactly. If you want to deep dive into the world then I wouldn't start here but at the same time the characters here are so much more the worst. The relationships that Cassandra writes is so well written like the characters are great. However as I said there's many of them and they all like are kind of related but not really like not in a bad way but like they all know each other and there's many characters okay that and there's many last names and there's many they mention the parents a lot and you don't know who they are unless you have read in front of the devices it's not necessary but if you want a full story if you want to not maybe be super confused if you're very easily confused by a lot of names then i would not start here either that is just my opinion and my recommendation but like the Inferno of Rises is a great series so it's no regrets to read that first. However, the diversity here, like everyone, I, like almost not jokingly, turned out gay and I was just like whoa I did not expect this because you feel like at least how it used to be before when someone was gay. It was always like that one side character and yes we have really great 
a mom and a father of relationships in Cassandra Clare's works that have grown and become really, really great. But here it was just from the start, a lot of people were in the LGBT spectrum, which I like. I should expect from Cassandra because she writes very diversely and very well and have been doing that uh, in her later series a lot and that is great like it's great to have the big names represent this because then it's more normalized and more people will see and reach out and find these stories which is amazing but I was just very surprised in like the best way how much diversity it was and I know people would maybe say that you shouldn't get credit for that it should just be obvious but a lot of people write the diversity very like forced and not well but here was just so natural and well written and I was just like my heart can't take all this so it's very well done also like Cordelia for example one of the main main characters is half Persian so that is very very cool as well and even like as an historical fiction we have have a POC as a main character, we have other main characters that are in the LGBT spectrum and they don't get like intense homophobia or racism which is very normal in historical fiction when you have diverse characters and we don't encounter any of that and it was just a breath of fresh air because I feel like every time we encounter these things in historical fiction there's always gonna be like someone hates on them which I guess someone would say always is historically correct but it's also really exhausting so here it was nothing like that at least not yet and I just appreciated it a lot in this book the characters that have been growing up Lucy and James and Cordelia they all grown up in relatively happiness and love because their parents are great there's the characters we know from the last series and we know they are not awful parents etc so they're not traumatized etc etc by the childhoods like a lot of the characters were in the other series so Cassandra has been speaking Speaking about it this a lot herself that it was hard to find out what could be wrong with them when they had been living so happy and the conflicts do show up and I think like the I would say villain the conflicts that come was refreshing she never uses the same storylines twice in her series and she has written a lot of them now in the same world we never encounter the same threat I would say there's always something new always something surprising and I think that's amazing to do when you keep writing in the same world even with the same characters almost not exactly the same main characters but they do encounter each other I think it's amazing work how it's still new it's still refreshing we always get new reveals and uh, new encounters the whole way and like as a person that's read all of the Shadowhunter Chronicle books and I still sit there and find new pieces to me I think that's amazing and my enjoyment of this was just so high like not even just like loving the characters but just finding out more I think plot wise there is like a red thread of course and we follow this mystery to find out what is happening because demon starts attacking and they haven't for a while in London and we need to find out why and I think it's a good mystery it's a good story but it also wasn't delved into that deeper there's so much going on like all these different characters interacting and I even felt like I needed more character moments to feel even deeper to their relationships like for example James and Matthew they are Parvati and we do mention a lot that they are and we have them being together but I want even deeper Parvati relationship than we got to see here same with Cordelia and Lucy they are to be Parvati here and I feel like even them I want to see why exactly they want to be that other than the that I meant that they have been very good friends. I want to see more of these relationships. The same with the Merry Thieves. You have them working together and being together but since they have already been friends for many years when we meet them I want more background to how they got so close. Like I know how they got so close because all the pairs are friends and related so obviously that's why but I wanted like to see it and not know it and I think that all that the relationships moments that we got between all of the different characters because as I said there's a lot of them are so well and we want more but also we need to carry the plot and I think like yes it was all well balanced and we got a lot of it and of course this is just the first book in the series so we will see more of the plot as it develops and more of the characters as they have their different conflicts and relationships and all that we will see all of that more later but I also wanted a bit more of everything not that I wanted a book longer the plot was very very good but I also wanted more of it because it felt 
I would say not low-key because it was pretty damaging and dramatic and all that but I just wanted I, I don't want to say more focus on it but it felt just a bit slack like not necessarily obvious either because it's not but also a bit like oh that was it. So I just wanted a bit more from it. But it wasn't bad by any means. And as I said, it's something totally new. She keeps doing that. Like, she keeps writing new original stories in the same world. That's just basically my only critique is that I just wanted more and show more and more details and backgrounds. But at the same time, it's already a really long book. It's like almost 600 pages long. What we got here was like very, very good. I ended up rating this like 4.5 out of 5 stars. It's a very solid start to the story. I can't wait to see more. I do kind of like it when they already know about the world since we are already so known with it. And I can really not wait for the next installment. I am gonna be waiting for a while and I am just like why? I also bought like two very exclusive editions of this. So this is not a finished coffee since it's an arc. I'm very excited to get those as well. I am like really Shadowhunter trash and I don't even like it's like amazing how we have just like traveled with all these characters for such a long time and it just feels nostalgic and beautiful and how it's still it's so much fun and how the story just keeps getting better and better and the characters just keeps getting so much more more than they were for example in the Mortal Instruments where I wasn't the biggest fan of most of the characters and here they just have so many more sides to them etc etc and I'm just hoping we get even more details and delve even deeper into everyone as I said before. In the end I just wanted to mention some romance because because I'm Claire has a lot of romance and always forbidden almost and always like dramatic and why they can't be together and it's always different why and I just kind of like I'm not the biggest fan of too much focus on romance because Sandra just balances romance in her books so well and here like the one of the main romance conflicts were like solved in the end not solved at all but like how it would ensue and develop in the next book I just was like oh my god so I just cannot wait and I, of course I won't spoil it but like if you read it it reminded me a lot but not that much of like Lenny Midnight and how like in the end the romance was like on like cliffhanger and it's like that here and it's like a recurrent thing but it's always a different circumstance and I just love it I love it and I was just so excited to see all the different other characters as well see where their romance lead or if they are not interested in that at all that is totally fine I just I love it okay and I can't wait to see where the story will go how will it end up because we have seen the future so we know like her world is not gonna fall apart at least but how the characters end up I am excited to see how it will go I think that is covers all the things I want to say about this book and I'm just so I can't believe I got an arc I just I want to cry just thinking about it. This is so precious to me. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I am just so happy you have no idea. And I enjoyed this so much. I would recommend it a lot. Even as a fan of the Shadowhunter Chronicles, of course. If you want to start here, then I have told you the warnings. But like, it's possible to start here. But I wouldn't recommend it. However you can, if you don't bother all the other ones. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy. You will see me soon in a new video. Chain of Gold is out on the 3rd of March. Bye!